Imagine there being a place where mountains meet the azure blue sea. Where the beaches are taken right out of a postcard, but it's still comfortable to ride in a mild climate. Where the days are endless and you can basically ride your bike at any time of the day. Where you can pitch your tent at the end of the day wherever you desire to, at no cost at all. If such a place existed, it would be bikepacking heaven. What if I told you that that place actually do exist? It's called Lofoden. Hello and welcome to this, the first day of my big tour of the summer of 2022. I'm starting today here in the Lofoten Islands and in about 12 days time I hope to make it all the way up to the northernmost point here in Europe, North Cape. I've cycled now for about two hours and I've only made it about 10 kilometers since I've probably stopped about a hundred times to take photos, videos and send up the drone. So I'm in for a long day here, the first day of my bike tour here in Lofoten. When you get a first glimpse of the Lofoten Islands, you expect it to be very challenging to experience on a bike, with all the mountains popping out of the sea. But in reality, it's actually the total opposite. There are hardly any major climbs to do if you follow the Eurovelo 1. The Atlantic coast route follows the outline of the islands. And this is a good thing in many ways. It means you're spending more time in these wonderful islands and skipping out of the major climbs and you're in for a very pleasant ride. All over Lofoten you run into these characteristic red huts called Rorbu. Many of them are built out in the water on poles. These cabins were originally built to accommodate fishermen during the cod fishing season. Back in the days, people from all over northern Norway would travel for days or weeks to be able to participate in the lucrative cod fishing season in the waters surrounding Lofoten. This created a demand for simple housing for the visiting fishermen. The fishing industry was of utmost importance for the Norwegian economy. So back in the 12th century, the Norwegian king Øystein ordered that a large number of small fishermen huts, Rorbu, was to be built in Lofoten. The reason for all of them being red is a real simple one. From the fish oil, which was in great abundance, they could extract a red pigment that was used in creating the paint. You also see a lot of white houses here in Lofoden. Historically, there was one white house in every fishing village, the manor house. They were painted white, which was the most expensive paint to mix. And it was used to show off the wealth and power of the manor house. Today, most of the fishermen that spend the fishing season in Lofoden live in their boats. Most of the old red huts have been preserved and modernized and are now used as accommodation for tourists instead. And they even build new red huts in the same style to keep up with the increasing demand of accommodation on the islands. If you feel like staying in one of these cabins, make sure to make a reservation way in advance, probably months or even a year ahead of your visit, since they sell out quickly. All over Lofoden you see fish hanging from racks. 
climate in the Arctic during spring is just perfect for drying fish. In Lofoten there's always a light breeze that provides for optimal conditions to dry the fish. The dry fish can then be stored for years without getting spoiled. The tradition of using racks outdoors is a very simple and cost-effective way of drying fish. And it has been handed down from generation to generation for centuries. During the whole drying process, the weight of the fish is reduced by about 70% while all the nutrients are still left in the fish, only more concentrated. By autumn, most of the fish are exported and sent down to southern Europe and Nigeria. When I went on my tour in June, there were still some fish heads left hanging here and there. And you could certainly feel the smell coming from them. Taking a little ice cream break here in Ramberg and uh, at the same time swapping out my GoPro battery. I'm gonna pop in my third battery of the day and I'm only halfway through the day so remember if you're going here to Lofoten bring a lot of batteries and a lot of SD cards. You're gonna need them. And after I've finished this ice cream cone, I'm just gonna pedal on for a couple of hundred meters over to Ramberistranda, one of the most popular beaches here in Lofoden. And that's just up ahead on this road here. A couple of kilometers later, I reached Ramberistranda, one of the finest beaches in Lofoden. A kilometer long white pristine sandy beach with azure blue water that will make you doubt you're still in the Arctic. You likely think that you've traveled through a portal and ended up in the Caribbean instead. 
Well, I decided to make a quick walk down to the water and feel the temperature for myself. And there was no doubt I was still in the Arctic. The water was freezing. Lofoten experiences the largest positive temperature anomaly in the world. Being located in the Arctic, you'd expect the temperature in the winter to be freezing. But on the contrary, the average temperature in January is only 1 degree Celsius, which makes it about the same temperature as in northern France. This is due to the fact that the surrounding waters lie right in the Gulf Stream. And without the warm currents, the islands would be covered in snow for most of the year. And hardly any vegetation would be able to grow here. During the summer months, it's not unusual to experience temperatures up to 30 degrees Celsius. In fact, that's exactly the temperature I had during my two days on the islands. So it's no wonder why people decided to settle here as far back as the Bronze Age. With all the beautiful surroundings, mild climate and on top of that some of the richest fishing waters in the world. Cod fishing in particular is huge around here and for centuries it has been the major industry of the islands. Lofoten is still regarded as one of the major seasonal fisheries around the world and the major income for a lot of people living here. Although recently tourism has become a close second. Each year the islands are visited by around 1 million people. Since Lofoten is made up by seven main islands, there are a lot of bridges and tunnels you're going to have to pass in order to get from one end to the other. But thankfully for every tunnel except for two, they've built bike paths that go along the tunnels on the outside. So while the cars get to experience this, you'll have a much more scenic view. There's a great online source that lists all the tunnels in Norway, how long each tunnel is and whether you're able to ride through them. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. There are also a few of these open air tunnels that you sometimes have to go through. They're built to protect the road from falling rocks. I had cycled for more than 50 kilometers before I reached the first tunnel I actually had to go through. The Napstrom tunnel. I'm just about to enter the first tunnel that I actually have to go through on this first day here. The rest of the tunnels I've just been passing on the outside, which has been really nice. But now I have to go through, so I gotta mount my bike lights so that I'm visible throughout the tunnel. This one is 1776 meters long and goes 63 meters under the sea and gives you a taste of what's to come further north. There's a somewhat elevated sidewalk on the left side, but the traffic was so low when I entered the tunnel that I decided to descend using the car lane and kept checking for any cars approaching from behind. Once I reached the bottom of the tunnel, I made my way over to the sidewalk and used that while climbing up to sea level again. I now entered the island Vestvåöja, which was previously named Lofoter. Lofoter later gave the name to the whole island group. And Lofoter, translated to English, means the paw of a lynx. It's the most populated island with over 10,000 inhabitants. So far the Eurovela 1 had pretty much been following the main E10 highway. But when I reached the town of Lexness, it took a welcome turn onto a less traveled road going along the east coast. You could follow the E10 since these two roads merge about 40 kilometers down the road, 
In Lake Ness I also took the opportunity to have a bit of dinner to power me through the last couple of hours in the evening. If you however have a big interest in Viking history you might opt for continuing along the E10. About 13 kilometers up the road from Lekknes, there's a little village called Borg that holds one of the most impressive Viking museums in the world. Lofoden has a very strong Viking history with a large number of important archaeological findings in the area. Perhaps the most impressive one is located in the small village of Borg where archaeologists found the remains of an old Viking village dated back to 500 AD, containing the largest Viking building ever discovered. This 83 meter long longhouse has since been restored and later turned into the Lofoder Viking Museum, where you can enter the longhouse and experience how the Vikings lived, as well as go sailing on a reconstructed Viking ship. I would probably have arrived at the Viking Museum after closing and to be honest with you I was more looking forward to a peaceful end of the day. So I headed for the less traveled road along the east coastline. After making it up the longest climb of the day, battling with some flies that probably caught up to my smell, I enjoyed a nice long downhill down to the east coast. This road turned out to be a hidden gem with beautiful vistas of the sea and I was practically by myself the whole time. Maybe a car or a motorcycle passed me every 5 minutes or so, but compared to the rest of Lofoden it was quite a relief to get away from the busy traffic for a while. So as you can see behind me the sun has sort of come down but it's not that the sun has set for the evening it's just because we're behind these big mountains here. But it's kind of nice to get into the shade as well. So the plan now is to cycle on for about an hour or more. I think I've done almost 80 kilometers so far. So the total distance of this whole trip from Lofoden all the way up to North Cape is about 1100 kilometers. So my goal is to make around 100 kilometers each day. But I know that these first two days are really spectacular, so I've set my goal down to about 90 instead. So let's hit the road again and see if we can find some nice wild camping spot later on. Along the road there were also a couple of campgrounds and an abundance of wild camping opportunities. I decided to opt for the latter alternative and started looking for a wild camping spot along the fjord. Wild camping is allowed in Norway according to Allemansrätten. However you need to show some consideration to the people living on the island and not just put up your tent wherever it suits you. But if you, like me, just go a little bit off the main road, you shouldn't have any problems finding a great campsite for just you and your bike. After a long day in the saddle, I eventually found my idyllic camp spot for the night. 
overlooking the nearby fjord and the mountains surrounding it. I'm getting eaten to death. <laughs> I just kicked off the thermocell here, so hopefully in a couple of minutes I'm able to sit outside and eat something before I hit <laughs> the bed. Is it just me or can you see all the flies? <laughs> So after having pitched the tent, I lay down and looked up in the sky and realized that I had put the tent right below a power line. After some reconsideration, I decided it was best to move the tent away from the power lines. So I moved it about 20 or 30 meters closer to the water here, uh, which <laughs> meant carrying all my gear down here and battling the midges and mosquitoes. But I found a place that was even nicer than the one I had previous. This is just maybe five meters away from, from the waterline and I have a fantastic view of the mountains. And uh, the sun has just gone below one of the mountains here, but I think it's gonna come up again in maybe half an hour or so. So I just spoke to my wife on the phone and she asked me how the day was and I said I can't really complain about anything today. I've had such a fantastic day. So join me next time when the journey here in Lofoden continues and until next time, have a good one. <laughs>